And we're off for another prediction video. This time around, Strike Force, Rousey versus Tate. First time we've had a main event female fight on a major card since Gina Carano versus Cyborg. So that's big news. This is not running against the UFC card, which I previously stated, although the UFC is running a rerun here in Canada right alongside of it, which is still a bit silly, but okay. Undercard, Roger Bowling, Brandon Sailing, Bowling. Um, I don't. I, I feel not tremendously interested in this fight. In, in a nutshell, Bowling is a a solid enough fighter. Um, you know, he's got a win over Bug Volker, all those two losses to him. He's also beat Seth Beckachansky and Shamar Bailey of tough fame. He's a good wrestler. I don't recall if he's the one. Let me look real quick. Uh, doesn't say on Wikipedia, but um, he does have a good wrestling background, but he is well-rounded. Brandon Sailing is just not a tremendously good fighter, and I'm taking Bowling by TKO. Connor Hume, Ryan Couture. Ryan Couture, famous for a name, not necessarily for talent, which is not to say he doesn't have talent. Um, he has shown some pretty good grappling chops, but his his stand-up needs work, and uh, most definitely so does his striking. Also, if you put him on his back, he seems pretty useless. Ask my Matt Wright, have Rice House on that one. Very young in his career. Connor Hume, pretty solid guy. You know, he's a brown belt and from 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu. He primarily likes to stand and bang, from what I can remember of him. I've not seen Connor Hume fight in ages. As we said, last time I saw him fight was against uh, KJ Nunes. And before that, you have to go back to James Edson Berto, Lead XC days. He's not a tremendously active fighter. Um, but yeah, despite the fact that he, he doesn't have a tremendous amount of power, he does like to stand and bang. That being said, he does have some wrestling. He does, as I said, have some grappling. Because he has 10th time juice a brown belt, which is oh man, that's nothing to scarf at. In the end, I got him winning here by decision. Um, I don't think he finishes Ryan Couture. Ryan Couture has not been finished yet. Hasn't been particularly easy to finish yet. But I think Connor Hume is just further ahead, I, I guess, in a nutshell, is, is what it is. He's developed to a point where Ryan Couture, you know, his fifth fight of his career is just not at. I suppose the best way to put it. Pat Healy, Carlos Fedor. Really hoping Carlos Fedor wins. Really hoping. Um, I like the guy. Good cardio. Very well rounded. You know, likes to try to finish fights at least. You know, if not, he will win that decision because you know he will push the pace. But that being and that being said, I'm not a huge fan of Pat Healy. That being said, Pat Healy, bigger, good wrestler, tough to finish, very tough guy. We saw. Oh, Terry, I can't remember his first name. I want to say it's James Terry. Yeah, James Terry. We saw James Terry and David Douglas both have some success taking down Carlos Fedor, and I can't imagine that the same wouldn't be true for a guy who's a better wrestler and also better at game planning, better at coming out there, better at cardio in the form of Pat Healy. And I got Healy by decision as a result. Um, he's not a boring fighter. He doesn't really lay in prey, but he, he definitely is a grinder. Um, and he does like taking out prospects. Sarah Kaufman, Alexis Davis, these two have fought before. Kaufman is better. Davis is probably better, but really not the same level. Thus, I'm predicting the same result. <laughs> um, unanimous decision. False Sarah Kaufman, maybe a TKO stoppage. She does hit pretty hard. But she didn't stop her before, and Alexis Davis is very new to the sport. It tends to make me think she won't stop her this time either. Scott Smith, uh, I'm going to try this. Lumumbu, Lumumba Sayers. Taking Sayers. Scott Smith's chin at this point has really lost some of its steam. He's really slumping right now. If he can get this win, and it wouldn't surprise me because, I mean, Sayers is more of a brawler. 
with heavy hands and not a tremendous, tremendous amount of striking technique, but Scott Smith's defensive striking is, you know, even at the best of times, pretty bad. When Pete Sell can almost finish you with his hands, you got a problem. And that's the case here. I see Sayers at, at, at some point hitting him with enough to put him down. And uh, I'm going to go KO, TKO, second round. Moving on to Bristol Morande, Jacare. Jacare is going to take a, something home with him, probably an arm. Bristol Morande, not great. Not any, in any way great. Um, Derek Brunson, the original fight, was actually pretty interesting. Uh, Brunson's a very interesting up and coming prospect who I would have picked Jacare against, but would have would have watched it with interest. With Morande, his only hope is to nail Jacare with one hell of a hot shot. Um, his wrestling is not good enough to keep the standing. And his ground game, and this isn't an insult because very few ground games are, but it's not good enough to hang with Jacare, and Jacare will submit him. Probably in the first round. Kazuo Masaki, Paul Daly. Paul Daly, heavy hands, good striking, improving wrestling defense. Almost, you know, almost blotted uh, Tyron Woodley, which is just strange. Um, but... Well, Masaki, you know, in the past might have had the ability to do this, you know, tough guy who can take you down and stand with you a little bit. Probably could have won this fight. He's not going to now. Kazuo Masaki's chin is heavily deteriorating. Paul Daly's got Semtex in his hands. That's what it did there. Um, and we'll knock him out. First, second round, tops. KJ Nunes, Josh the Punk Thompson, going with the Punk. Never been a big fan of KJ Nunes. If he can't outstrike you handily, he, he doesn't do well. He doesn't have the wrestling that the Punk does. He doesn't have the ground game that the Punk does. And I have the Punk winning by submission, probably second round, because that first round is it, going to be tough. I mean, KJ Nunes, he does stuff some takedowns. He is a very good boxer. He's okay kickboxer. But, um, uh, you know, his last fight against... Uh, Billy Evangelista was somewhat of an eye opener. Um, his, his striking defense is, is not tremendously good, and Josh Thompson will exploit that. And Josh Thompson will probably get him down. And Josh Thompson will probably submit him. There you go. Misha Tate, Ronda Rousey, the most interesting fight on this card. This is unfortunate. Strike Force can't put together a good, all around interesting card. But it is what it is, I suppose. Lack of talent. UFC sends some people over instead of repetitively taking them away. Or shut it down. Take your pick. Um, obviously, we know about Ronda Rousey, world class Judica. You know, very, very good. Very good arm bar. Strong girl. Don't know a lot about her stand up. Don't know a lot about her chin. That being said, Misha Tate, mm, people, people are trying to say she's more experienced in MMA. And that is true. And, you know, and she'll be able to outstrike her easily. <sighs> Problem is, exactly, instead of Sarah Ariza, apparently who she knocked out, who has Misha Tate ever outstruck? In all seriousness here. Um, you look at her fight with Zoyler Grigel, she had a problem on the feet there. I mean, Grigel's a striker, but still, Conan gave her trouble on the feet. Uh, Hitomi Akano. A Judica, who's not as good as Rousey, or at least not as big as Rousey, you put that way, and not tremendously good on the feet, gave her all kinds of problems on the feet and on the ground. Phone went off again. Oh, yeah. And I got to pick Rousey. Um, you know, people are making a big deal about, you know, no one's ever taken uh, Misha Tate down. That being said, she's been reversed. If you watch the Sarah Kaufman fight that she lost, and you watch the Akano fight, I can't remember if Akano actually reversed her or just came really, really close. But I mean, there's the point is Akano's not as big and not as strong as Rousey, and I don't think it's going to be Judica. And if Kaufman can reverse you and get you on your back, I'm certain that Ronda Rousey can. I'm also certain Ronda Rousey, if she is getting outstruck that badly, is going to be willing to pull this fight to the ground, whether she's on top or bottom, um, just to try to change it up. And also, here's a fact on a not 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 so much personal but training camp. You know, all the turmoil at Alpha Male involving Misha Tate has got to take its toll on you as well. 
As a result, I gotta go with Ronda Rousey. I was originally pondering taking Kate, but I really, really got around to thinking about it, watching some older fights, not tremendously old, but older, and looking at it, and I'm like, as much as I would like to see experience triumph here, and I do somewhat dislike Rousey talking her way into a title shot over me, over Sarah Kaufman. That being said, it's partially I'm a Sarah Kaufman fan, and I would have enjoyed seeing Kaufman take two, but I cannot take Kate in this fight, I feel. The advantages that she has, I think Rousey can nullify. And that's where I'm going with this. I don't think she subs her with an arm bar, but I do think she subs her. Because I would think, I would hope, I would pray, that Tate is drilled arm bar defense like a motherfucker. And as such, we'll be able to avoid that. Okay. But I think it may actually leave her more susceptible to other things. So, Rousey submission, second round. Those are my thoughts. Enjoy the fights.